Today, we're going to be going through the top six essential skills you need to master in old school RuneScape if you want to progress to harder content and earn the big money from those lucrative boss drops and purple chests. Let's talk about one of the most crucial skills in old school RuneScape, prayer switching. If you're gearing up for some PVM action, mastering prayer switching is an absolute must. Switching prayers is necessary for when you need to mitigate damage for enemies that use more than one attack style. One of the most iconic fights that demands prayer switching is in the fight caves against Tuztok Jad. But as you progress through harder content, you'll need to nail prayer switching against a variety of foes. It's a crucial technique for both Zebak and Wardens in the Tombs of Amascot, and the Nihilicus boss, Sotaseg, and Verzik in the Theatre of Blood. And hey, even the entry level boss, Scurious the Rat King, requires it. If you're new to prayer switching, Scurious is the perfect encounter to cut your teeth on. During one of his phases, you'll need to swiftly switch between mage and range prayers depending on the projectile he uses. You have until the projectile hits you to make the switch. This gives you a bit more breathing room compared to some of the older content where you often need to have the correct prayer up before the projectile is even in the air. Next up on our list is the tick system. So imagine the tick system is like the heartbeat of the game. It's the rhythm everything moves to from swinging your sword to casting spells. Each tick is 0.6 seconds. Now, why does this matter? Think of it like this. Every time you swing your weapon, shoot an arrow or cast a spell, it takes a certain number of ticks to do it. Weapons like daggers have a 4 tick attack speed equal to 1 attack every 2.4 seconds and weapons like two-handed swords have an attack speed of 7 ticks or 4.2 seconds. Your enemy's attacks are also working to the same rhythm. This is useful for predicting attacks and knowing when to dodge or prey against them. Even eating food and drinking potions takes ticks. One important thing to be aware of is that some items can be consumed on the same tick as others. The best example of this is the triple eat. You can eat a regular item of food like a sea turtle, then a karam one, and then sip a saradomin brew, all on the same tick. This restores up to 55 health depending on your HP level. Another great example of tick manipulation in combat is the tick eat. If you eat on the tick you would have taken lethal damage, you'll be left standing with your HP at the healing value of whatever food you consumed. This is really useful for tanking big hits, like Sotaseg's Death Ball in the Theatre of Blood or Vorkast's Fireball. Let's delve into another vital skill for combat, gear and weapon switching. Whether you're swapping out between phases during Zora, Akka and the Nihilicus Room, or between mini-bosses like Dagoneth Kings, it's another crucial skill to master. Bosses often switch between different attack styles or prayers, requiring you to adapt your gear and weapons on the fly. For example, bosses like Akka in Tombs of Mascot and the Calphite Queen will tell you what they are weak against with the protection prayer icons visible above their character model. In other situations, it can be a bit more subtle. In the Nihilicus room, for example, the Nihilos are weak against whatever attack style they're currently set to. This is visible by their colour. Making these changes mid-fight is the real skill you'll need to master. Start simple with just changing your weapon and then add in bigger switches. Getting full void is a useful tool for this, as the most you'll have to do is switch your weapon and helmet to be well geared for your new attack style. Next up is prayer flicking. Prayer flicking involves toggling your prayers on and off swiftly between game ticks. By doing so, you exploit the game mechanics. Your prayer appears active to the game, but it never truly depletes. This can be done once between enemy attacks or every game tick, a technique known as the one tick flick. While it might not be the go-to skill for tackling tough bosses at first, it can be a game changer when you're low on prayer resources during a lengthy boss encounter or even during a simple slayer task. Overall, it's just a pretty handy tool that can provide that crucial edge when you need it most. Mastering player movement in old school RuneScape can significantly enhance your gameplay. You could be evading falling debris, navigating a maze or avoiding enemy attacks. Understanding how to move efficiently is key. You should be trying to pick the most optimal route to reach your destination whilst minimising unnecessary movement. You can save valuable time and resources, allowing you to focus on more important tasks like dealing damage and healing up. Picking diagonal movement where appropriate is a great way to save time. A great example is in the Sodaseg maze. Another thing to be aware of is that when you are running, your character moves two tiles instead of one. This means that the middle tile between your starting point and your destination is skipped, making it a safe spot where you can't take damage. 
In combat situations, effective movement can mean the difference between life and death. Whether you're dodging a powerful special attack from a boss or manoeuvring to avoid a deadly trap, mastering movement can keep you one step ahead. Mastering pathing and movement in RuneScape isn't just about your character's own movements, it's also about understanding how enemies navigate the game world. By understanding how enemies move and react, you can manipulate their behaviour to create safe spots or control their movements during a fight. Knowing how your enemy is going to move is a crucial skill in arguably the hardest content in the game, the Inferno. The whole thing relies on you luring the correct monsters to the correct spots efficiently so they can't damage you. A great example of getting enemies stuck is on the Italy rock during the fight caves, where the enemies get stuck on the rock and can be safe spotted. One for kiting is the Akka butterfly technique, where you keep him moving constantly and he never catches up to you. So there you go. They're my six techniques you need to master to dominate the bosses in PVM. If you've made it to the end, drop me a like and subscribe. See you next time.